Hey guys, so today's chat, I'm gonna talk about a book that I just read and just finished and I thought it was awesome. And I'm saying like where I think everybody should read Atomic Habits. This book that I just finished is right up there with it. Probably number one, um, especially if you wanna learn just a really well overview of what our health or our where our health is headed in the in the western culture how it's affected us today and how it affects uh, modern medicine and just in general like quality of life and longevity like how long we're going to live and how well we're going to live so the book is called outlive by peter atia he's a doctor and uh, it's basically like an encyclopedia of where we're at today, why we're there as far as health conditions. Um, he discusses what he calls the four horsemen, which are the, the four top leading causes of death in uh, the United States. The four horsemen are heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, and type two diabetes. Those are what he calls the four horsemen. Um, so if you've ever wanted to have a really good understanding of those particular diseases and how we got there and how we can get out of where things are headed, like this is the book. And when I say that he covers everything, like he, he starts with talking about medicine as it is today and not in a negative way at all. He talks about how, you know, medicine has uh, allowed people to, you know, cure certain diseases, live longer, all these, like, you know, it prolongs life. But he also comes back on the um, back end of that. He calls, calls medicine today, to, medicine 2.0, and but then also wants us to think about medicine moving forward as medicine 3.0, which is a proactive approach to what you do on a daily basis, like exercise, what you eat and all that stuff. So it really aligns with obviously what we coach in Clean Kitchen. And when I say that when I started reading this, like within the first couple of chapters, I was just like, yes, this is amazing. Because not only does uh, he relate it to uh, uh, older, adult diseases that you develop later in life, but he relates it to what you're doing now earlier in life. And I'm talking like by decades, you know, what you're doing in your teens, your twenties, your thirties, your forties and on, how that's going to affect how you age and what that quality of your life is like. So he talks about uh, longevity and life in terms of there's a lifespan but then there's also versus a health span. So lifespan is obviously how long you live. Health span is how well you live, like how healthy you are through those decades. Because while Medicine 2.0 has allowed people to live longer and beat certain diseases, we've also kind of hindered our quality, our health span, like we may have that an extra decade of life, but what does that de extra decade actually look like? Are we able bodies? Um, where we have, you know, we, we can live longer, but we're not, we're not actually living well. So that's what the whole book is kind of about. And it just gives this, I just say, overview of the entire landscape of how things are causing certain things in your life, like certain diseases, certain certain things. He relates it back to what you've been doing for decades. And uh, I mean, I think it, it's a really good read, not just because of the message, but more importantly, I feel like a lot of people don't understand why you should start as soon as possible, like changing your your habits and what you do to yourself because <clears throat> there is a saying you know like you you you're you're going to pay either by money like buying groceries buying gym memberships paying with time using your time wisely to you know 
do certain things like make an appointment to go exercise and stuff like that or you can pay later on the back end with your health i'm not saying he's not saying in this book that he's you know curing all diseases or anything like that but it but he goes each chapter is dedicated to some type of topic so you could probably pick and choose like which chapters you want to read and read them out of order it obviously makes more sense to read it in order because he does reference things in the uh, the from the previous chapters but you know so say you really want to learn about what is heart disease and how does it happen and how do you combat it you know even as a person that ha is genetically predispositioned to you know have these certain diseases like what could you do now in order to you know give yourself the best shot and he like literally explains it you know, uh, and helps you understand what's going on with that disease or why it's caused and all that. And so I guess that's why I really love this book is that it it does get a little sciencey in some parts, but it's a really good explanation of of it, and anybody could really understand it if they truly are interested in learning about it. So um, he he goes through other things too besides those those uh diseases but you know uh your metabolism metabolic dysfunction like what is that what is that how is what is cause you know what causes that how do you get out of it like when i say it's just like a wealth of knowledge <laughs> like that that's what it is so the front of the book kind of like sets you up for that but then he also starts talking about um certain people in the population that like their physiology or their biology they are they they live longer so uh they're called centurions so it's crap i'm gonna mess that up anyways people that live longer like up to 100 years and over and there's a handful of them so basically what he's doing is like you know looking at them and saying like what is it about their physiology what is it about their genes that allows them to live this long and then a lot of them are like you know high functioning like capable humans that it's almost like one day they're they're doing their normal every day cooking their breakfast going to the store you know and 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 then in a short time you know their body essentially just gives out but it's not because of any kind of disease or anything like that it's just old age but they're like well you know over 100 you know so he, he basically tries to dissect why those people are able to do that and then how can it how can we become those uh sen sanitarians uh and or not sanitarians but you know like live longer like w live well well into our like eighth decade ninth decade um so one of the things that i loved about this book is that um he has a whole chapter on exercise and but he builds up the exercise too it's not that you're training for the right now you're training for your sedentarian decathlon that's what he talks about it's like your uh it's your top 10 list it could be more of activities or tasks you want to be able to do whenever you're 80 years old so it could be, I want to be able to go to the grocery store and, you know, shop for my own groceries or cook my own food or, you know, do the laundry, walk upstairs, you know, unassisted, or it could be anything. It could, it could be a uh, daily tasks like home life type stuff or even activities. And so what he does with his patients is that he basically gets them to make this, this decathlon list of you know top 10 things that he, he they want to be able to do still whenever they're in that old age and so he relates it back to a lot with your fitness level in your earlier decades not saying that if you're you know starting out later getting fitter everybody can get fitter no matter what age they're in so there's never too late to start but it's a really interesting that he related it to your vo2 max like tests. So VO2 max is basically a test that uh, will test your threshold of uh, output, oxygen, you know, 
like how much you can basically take in a workout before you just tap out and quit. It is like, if any, if you've ever done a VO2 max test, it is not comfortable. It is very hard because you are trying to get to that max effort of exertion. And so he relates that he basically says like, if you want to be able to do X when you're 80, you need to have a VO2 max score fitness level at this, depending on what decade of life you're in. So, so it kind of gives you this reason for training. Um, I know me personally, myself, I've kind of become complacent in my training where I don't necessarily feel the drive to get uh, faster or stronger. I'm, I always joke, I'm like, I'm fit enough. You know, I'm not going to try any harder. Well, now thinking in longevity terms, like, yes, of course, I'm going to try to stay fit enough. Like, I'll, I'll, I want to be, you know, fit. But thinking even long term, like, okay, well, now I have a goal for this decade of my life that I am. I'm in, I'm in my, I'm 40 this year. So, you know, I could try to keep that certain VO2 max score, you know, and, and give me a reason to train because I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z in the later decades. I thought that that, that really resonated with me as far with exercise, because I know it can get really hard to have a goal to exercise or want to exercise. But, um, if you put it in that perspective and it's almost like you get a why, so you know how we do the five whys in clean kitchen. Um, you know, it gives you an even deeper why as to why you're doing what you're doing day in and day out. Um, I just thought that it was the whole book in itself. It's a, it's a, it's a long book. Um, I got it on Audible and I bought it in print because I like to highlight and take notes and stuff. It's that good. Like I, I'm putting it on the CK book list as uh, number one to read because of all the just a well-rounded overview of why you want to get your your stuff together now as soon as you can because while I think it's awesome that people can live longer you know with modern medicine I don't want to be living longer if I can't do certain things you know, I, that, that's not a quality of life. That's not actually living. So, you know, when it comes to longevity, I don't measure it in years. I measure it in, I'm, I'm going to measure it in health span instead of lifespan. Like how long can I keep my body able to do the things that I want to do and live that quality of life as, as long as possible. There's this quote that says, um, that I heard the other day and I was like, oh, perfect. Um, I want to die as old as possible, feeling as young as possible. So that, it gives me, it gives me hope that people are gonna get their hands on this type of reading. And I hope that you go out and purchase this book because it really gives you an even deeper why to, to be better every day, a little bit better every day. It doesn't mean like super sh crazy. It just means let's get a perspective. Let's get our mind around it. And then, you know, let's get after it. And, and, and by decades, you're measuring your success by decades, which is really cool to think about because I'm going to be in my eighties doing my little workout. I don't know what level that workout's going to look like, but I got a couple of decades to train for it. So Go out and get this book. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, you will not be disappointed. And that's all I got for this week. All right, bye-bye.